Christ. He might punch me. <laughs> <laughs> what else have you painted in here when I haven't been looking? Uh. <laughs> in the paint shop with the boys, masking up. Can you explain a little bit more about the process? So we've obviously prepped the carbon down, um, ready to get it into primer. It's uh, William's front wing. Um, so obviously we mask off the underneath of it to stop paint and overspray and bits and pieces getting on it. Um, so yeah, we'll put it in the booth, we'll spray it up, um, ready obviously for the next process before we matte lacquer it um, and seal it in. The halo and the headrest down there, um, along with a few other bits and pieces, that will go through the same process, they'll get braised up and then yeah, paint it at the same time as this. Timeline of the yeah, process, yeah, how many yeah. you get through a day? <laughs> Christ. He might punch me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, he might. My little angry chihuahua might. Yeah. Paint, how long does it take to paint the whole car? To prep and paint it? Um, at Williams, from start to finish, you're probably looking at about two and a half, three days. Something along that general line. Because um, obviously, once we finished a bit here, obviously, it gets sent away over to Race or down here into our new graphics department. So the completed car will go in there, and then all the graphics will be applied in yeah. that. And dust, wrap, free, dust free yeah. zone. And, and then, then, yeah, it'll get wrapped over the top of and then sent to the customer. So you've got two different tapes here. Yeah. What's the difference? So that's a, potentially a fine line. So wherever you don't want paint up to, you put that tape down first because it gives you a more definitive edge. And no paint will run underneath there. No, no paint will but run if underneath it. you use that it. on the outside, paint will run underneath it. And that, when you pull it, you can sort of stretch it so it will go around corners nicely, yep. whereas that won't. So yep. it just gives you a better line around the edge of where you want it to go. Here we are with our new paint booth. Um, you're telling me you've just baptised it. What do you mean by that? Uh, so we've tacky coated, it's just been commissioned. Um, so it's all been signed off and now we've tacky coated all the booths. So it's all protected by this protective film. It's a spray on film. So when this gets dirty, we'll wash it off and then we'll redo it. So the booths will always stay white and clean. Cool. And obviously the floor gets filthy or, or dirty and dusty. How often do you have to clean the floor? So the fill is, so we'd probably do about, about 100 hours maybe, roughly about 100 hours um, of booth cycle, and then we'll tear the filters up, lay new ones down, and she'll get to go again. So this is our latest booth, so now we've got three booths? Three booths and a mixing room. I think our first booth arrived in December 22, 16, 17 months ago. So we had one booth in another unit, now we've got three booths, yeah. All in one unit. So, so having three booths means we can paint a lot more show cars and sims. Um, be more efficient, get more work get out the door. So let's get more preps up, get it more in the paint. Because the paint was the paint booths are holding it up, so they're not holding up now. So we can get the stuff all painted and get out the door. So basically you could paint anything, any colour. Yeah. What else have you painted in here when I haven't been looking? Uh, <laughs> kitchen cabinets have been kitchen cupboards have been painted before in here. Car wheels for the guys' Car cars. Wheels. Any speedboats? Jet skis? No. Not yet. I could oh, do yeah. one of them being painted in there. The guys could paint anything in there anything. would fit. And I'm sure they do more when I'm not looking. Like BMXs and, and bikes would be easy. All right, Big D. Yeah. Big D's been our framer for 19 years. It's been oh, here forever. Right, right. Long time. Yeah. Uh, framing some Sean O'Malley fight worn shorts. Uh, what's the process? Talk us through it. Uh, well, we have to make a template. It goes inside the waist. Two things, actually. It holds the shorts on the mount board, and then this. So he signed to... on the back. Is that yeah, normal? Does is... he always no, sign on the back? No, they're normally signed on the front, but. Uh... Just to be awkward, this one's signed on the back. So we put Just that to be on awkward. there. That's an NFC. That's what you scan to tell you about your authenticity, and that's in the shorts. It's not symmetrical. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to measure it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't hit me. He's likely to. Does it make it harder because you sign on the back? Because you're used to framing them the other way around? Um, well, I say these are different to the ones I've been doing anyway. But, They're different uh, shorts. So these shorts are Sean O'Malley fight worn shorts from 2018. That's why a bit more difficult to frame because most of our shorts we get now are all the current shorts. How f sake, way. come on. Should have bought my UFC gloves. You don't want to piss off Big D, he will uh, hurt me. Would you rather have toes for fingers or fingers for toes? Um, I wouldn't mind having both. It'd be quite fun. But if I really had to choose, I would rather have fingers for toes. Right, Big D, back to it. How are we getting on? Finished? Uh, well... I'm on the clock. Nearly. He's, he's playing for overtime. So Big D, what happens next? 
Right, once I've got this on here, I need to make some frames because I've got a few other ones to do. Uh, and then it'll go in the frame. And yep. then after, when it's all finished and complete, this is going to be on our UFC collectibles auction platform. <laughs>